Hi, my name is Marina and I make paper cut illustrations. In this video I'll be making a paper cut of a pixie girl inspired by the Folk of Air book series. She's not a specific character from the book itself, but rather a collection of different bits and pieces from different characters put together. This illustration took me roughly an hour to sketch, which I did off-camera, and then somewhere about three hours to cut. While cutting, I'd like to walk you through my creative process, so grab a cup of tea or coffee and enjoy the video. The very first thing to paper cut would be her face, and her eyes in particular. Her eyes and the face area in general are full of tiny details, and I have to pay extra attention making sure all these details are cut well. The person's face is always the most unforgiving area when it comes to mistakes, like mistakes in proportions or perspective. I can easily hide these kind of mistakes in areas like her hair or maybe her clothes, well, in this case, she's covered with her wings. But it's really, really difficult to hide anything in the face area. So if at this point something goes wrong, say her eyes will be bigger or smaller, or her nose will be turned in a slightly different angle than intended, then I can always retrace my sketch and start cutting all over again. So this way I make sure that the trickiest part, her face, is done first. After her face is ready, I'd usually start working on her hair. This is also a very detailed area, and you can see that there are lots of very thin lines that are cut very close to each other. The closer the lines are, the more there is a chance of tearing paper, so the cut should be done pretty slowly and preferably with a new sharp blade. This is probably the most time-consuming area to cut, however, it shouldn't necessarily be cut as precise as, say, her face. The hairlines can be cut outside of the initial sketch and they would still look good. So usually at this point I would turn on a podcast or an audiobook as a background and I would cut for an hour or so non-stop. So this is actually a pretty meditational part of the cut and I love it. I'd also like to mention a few words about the paper I'm using. So this is 120 gram office paper. It is pretty smooth and it has hardly any texture to it. For comparison, your typical printer paper would be somewhere around 80 to 90 grams, and the carton would start somewhere around 210. So for me personally, 120 grams is a good paper thickness to easily cut it through and for paper to hold the cuts relatively well. Also, as you can see, the color of the paper is light gray. I know there are some people who prefer cutting straight away on black paper, but personally I find it much easier to cut on the lighter paper and then paint it black. My reason for doing so is that typically I would do a few sketches first and then would trace one on top of another using a light box. So obviously tracing black lines to black paper is not that easy, so this is why I'm cutting my paper cuts on light paper and then I would cover them with black paint when everything's ready. I use acrylic water-based paint to spray my paper cuts from both sides, and I really like how paper cuts look when they're black, because they remind me somehow of linen cuts, and I think that makes them look just a bit more interesting than they would be if they would have stayed white. When the hair is ready, I'd start working on her wings. Because her hairstyle lines are really thin and delicate, I want to make sure that the wing lines are a little bit heavier and thicker. The very last thing I would do is cut out the border. 
The reason to do so as a very, very last step is that if there are any additional details I'd like to add, like for example some pointy ends to her wings or maybe some lines in her hair, that would still be possible. Also having some paper around the tiny details gives my paper cut a bit more stability, so personally I find it a bit more convenient to cut this way. When ready with cutting, I would always cover my paper cut with black paint. I'd spray it from both sides and will let it dry for a few hours. I'm also trying to make it a habit of scanning and tracing my paper cut as soon as it's ready, so in case I need it, I have a digital backup version. And that's it! Paper cut is ready! I'm really happy how the pixie girl turned out. And I hope you enjoyed watching this process video. Maybe it would inspire you to try paper cutting yourself. It's a really interesting form of art and it's very accessible. The only things you need are basically a cutting mat, paper knife and a single sheet of paper. And if you do, please let me know, because I'll be really curious to see your art. Enjoy creating and see you soon. Bye!